What's up guys, Saf here on Super Saf TV and welcome to another Super Saf style camera comparison. This time it is of course the much awaited one between the iPhone 11 Pro Max versus the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. The most requested, thumbs up for that would be appreciated. Of course we're going to be looking at all aspects of the cameras. We're going to be looking at the front facing cameras, the rear facing cameras, all of the different lenses. Uh, we're also going to be looking at low light and also look out for the audio icon. Right. Now, we're at the front-facing cameras on both. What's great is we've got 4K recording on both for the first ever time. So let's test out the stabilization from the front-facing cameras on both here. So just walking. And now let's go ahead and run. Let me know what you think. Okay, now we've switched over onto 1080p just to see if the stabilization is any different at 1080p. So walking and let's go ahead and run again. Right, we've switched to the rear facing cameras now. Of course, lots of light coming in from here. Let's move around a little bit onto this side. And now let's test out stabilization. So it's gonna walk for a bit. And when we get onto this path, let's, uh, let's run. Now we do have multiple lenses on both cameras so we can optically zoom times two on both devices and we also have the ultra wide so what that means is we can get a whole load more into our shot check out that that looks so cool right so now we're going to test out stabilization but on the ultra wide so Walking. Let's go ahead and run. See what the dynamic range is like. We've just switched to 1080 now to see what the stabilization is going to be like because you do have super steady mode. On the Note 10 Plus when it comes to 1080. So just to show you the difference, 1080 on both. Let's go ahead and run. We can also switch to the ultra wide. So once again, 1080 on the ultra wide. Stabilization. Boom. Right, for this final video test, we are gonna film at 60 frames a second. This video is gonna be exported out at 30, but just to kind of show you what these two look like when we have filmed at 60 frames a second. And let's see what the stabilization is at 60 FPS as well. There we go. Now we're just doing a quick low light video test while this some light coming from there but let's just look at some darker areas this is something a lot of people keep asking about but uh, i'm generally a little bit worried about my safety because i don't want to be touched up by a ghost or something so if that happens and i'm blaming you guys but anyway that is low light video Right, a new feature that we've got on both devices is zoom in audio. So the way this works is when you zoom in, it's also supposed to zoom in to the audio source and make things sound clearer. Let's test this out. Now we are zoomed in on both 2X optical and this is what it sounds like on both devices. We'll switch between these as well. Definitely let me know which one you think sounds better. Now we're gonna test out the autofocus on the iPhone. 11 Pro Max seems to be doing really, really well. Same test this time on the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus also seems to be doing very, very well. Now the Note 10 Plus also has a live focus video, which is supposed to blur the background uh, while we're in video. Let me know what you guys think. I should be in focus and the background should be blurred. 
Now this feature live focus also has support for some effects like having the background in black and white while you're still in color. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. The Note 10 Plus also has live focus video from the front facing camera. So it should be blurring the background out. And once again, you've got some effects and things that you can apply while you're in live focus video. So that's just one of the features that we've got here on the Note. Now, Apple's answer to this is slow fees, slow motion selfies. Right, there is a lot to get through. That was the video. Now, before we move on to images, a quick reminder, if you haven't already, then be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon. That way you won't miss any future Super SAF style coverage. Now, looking at what we're working with here, we've got a very similar triple camera setup on both devices. There's a primary, there's a telephoto, which is gonna give you two times optical zoom, and then there is an ultra wide. Now, the Note does have an additional depth sensor here as well. And for the ultra wide camera, the Note does have a high resolution, but for the front facing cameras, the iPhone has a high resolution. And just quickly to note as well, that all images that you see have been taken on automatic. Uh, I haven't tweaked any settings and that is to keep things as fair as possible. Let's get straight to it. Right, so starting off with an image outdoors in very good lighting, both doing an amazing job, great dynamic range on both devices, but we can definitely see some differences in color. The iPhone going towards the more natural, true to life colors, whereas the Note is going for the more vibrant, more saturated, punchy colors. Uh, this is something that I think you're gonna notice throughout this comparison. It's something that uh, Samsung devices tend to do. You may or may not like this. Some people do prefer that more punchy look straight out of the camera so you can share it straight away. Some people like more of a natural look which you can edit later on. Now testing out the telephoto camera on both devices, uh, both once again doing really, really good. You've got uh, around about the same zoom on both. Uh, here, I do like the Note image better. It does seem to have better dynamic range. If you look towards that space, man, uh, more details in the shadows have been maintained on the Note compared to the iPhone. Now it's time to look at my favorite. The usuals will be ready for this. You have the regular angular view and then boom. We have the ultra wide and this lets you get so much into your shots. You guys know I'm a huge fan of ultra wide cameras and both of them seem to be doing a good, good job. Uh, what I really like is that colors are consistent between the three cameras on both devices. However, I do notice that the note is sharper. Uh, if we go in 200% towards the grass area, especially, you can see that uh, the iPhone is a little bit soft towards those areas, whereas the note has maintained those uh, details. Uh, that might be down to the fact that it's got a high resolution, 16 megapixels versus 12, but I do prefer the ultra wide shots here on the note. Now, moving on to some more outdoor shots, primary camera, both doing very good overall. Uh, colors are great, dynamic range is also very very, very good on both devices. Uh, using the telephoto camera once again uh, does let you get in closer. Uh, once again, color differences, but both are doing very, very good here. And then we've got, of course, the ultra wide, uh, lots more into your shots. Once again, however, I do notice that the note does seem to be sharper. Now inside the iconic and pancreas station using the primary cameras, uh, the colors again, you can really notice the color differences here. Uh, the notes definitely more vibrant. Uh, if you look towards uh, the, the what do you, I'm not sure what you call them, the, the metal uh, rails uh, that are holding up the roof, uh, they seem more on the blue side on the note, whereas uh, you're definitely getting more of a natural tone on the iPhone. Now, if we do use the telephoto cameras, uh, the color differences are there, but I'm noticing that the note is sharper. So if we do go in 200% towards this clock, uh, I am noticing the sharpness here on the note. Now I know the note does uh, sharpen in post, uh, as far as I'm aware, but uh, in this image, uh, I do prefer it. And once again, boom, we have that ultra wide, getting in so much more into your shots. Uh, this is a great example of how you can just really get some epic landscapes using the ultra wide. So I'm definitely digging the fact that we've got ultra wides on both of these. Um, the note once again, sharper, uh, we have the color differences as well. Now I wanted to test the ultra wide even further. So uh, I took it in a very tricky dynamic range situation. So we've got the sun coming in here from the background and the color differences once again are here 
but uh, you can notice in the shadows, the note has maintained more details there. It is brighter in those shadow areas. So I would say I do prefer the ultra wide so far on the note compared to the iPhone. Now let's move on to portraits. This is one of my favorite areas. Uh, both seem to be doing a really, really good job here. Uh, I do definitely prefer the colors on the iPhone. Uh, it has maintained the dynamic range a little bit better as well. Uh, on the note, if you look towards my t-shirt, uh, some of the highlights have started to blow out. And uh, it does seem to be a little bit washed out, in my opinion, uh, on the note compared to the iPhone. But the note does seem to have better edge detection. If you look towards the edge of my glasses, uh, that has been cut out better on the note. And also that little, very, very little area uh, in between my jacket, uh, uh, that has been blurred on the Note, but it hasn't been on the iPhone. Now, that does seem to be thanks to that additional depth sensor on the Note, uh, which is giving you a better job when it comes to edge detection, but I do prefer the colors on the iPhone. Now, one new thing that we've got on both devices, which is really cool, is that you can use the primary camera for portraits as well. And this will let you get wider portraits, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it's nice that we've got these here. And here, once again, we do have those color differences. The iPhone is uh, maintaining those colors better and it's also not as washed out. If you look towards the background uh, where the sun is hitting, um, things have been blown out a little bit on the Note, whereas those have been maintained on the iPhone. And you know, edge detection wise, I think both are doing roughly the same. They're both not doing great. I think you do get better edge detection when you are using the telephoto camera, not the primary camera but the option is there if you need it. One thing that I'm noticing is that the note does seem to have like a gradual blur. So if you look at the grass near where I'm standing, it does seem a bit more natural because you've got kind of that fall off a blur, which is trying to replicate what you'd get on a DSLR. Uh, whereas on the iPhone, that isn't as prominent. Another shot, and we've got a similar story here. Colors, once again, I do prefer on the iPhone. If you look towards my jacket, details have been better maintained on the iPhone. Uh, we do seem to have a bit of a washout on the Note, uh, but edges have been detected better on the Note once again compared to the iPhone, especially again towards my glasses. You can see that uh, the iPhone has struggled a little bit there, whereas the Note has done a better job. So, uh, you know, we're getting a very similar theme here across the portrait images. Colors and dynamic range better on the iPhone and edges seem to be better on the Note. Now, final portrait shot. This is something with some very, very harsh lighting in the sunlight. And here, I definitely do prefer the iPhone. You can see that it's maintained colors a lot better, dynamic range as well. On the Note, things seem to be very, very washed out. Uh, if you look towards the background, uh, there's a lot of highlights that have been blown out towards those windows. And uh, it does make me look a little bit uh, pale here, whereas the iPhone has maintained those details a lot better. Right, now the section that you've all been waiting for, low light. Uh, this is the first time we've got a night mode on the iPhone where it's gonna take multiple exposures. I'm so glad that Apple have finally included this because traditionally the Note has easily won when it's come to low light images. Here is an image that's taken on both devices automatic default. So we're not using night mode on this shot just to show you the difference. Both doing a good job actually, seem to be doing pretty well, but we do have quite a bit of light coming from the space center. But wait for it, boom, look at that. So now we've got the night mode. It has brightened up the shot so much better and you've got a much more pleasing shot. Uh, I do like both shots here. Uh, I think both have done a good job. Uh, both have clipped a few of the highlights from the lights, but that's fine. We've got a much better shot from both devices and I really do like the night mode. I would call this one a bit of a draw. Now, another shot uh, using night mode from the primary cameras, uh, both doing a good job overall. If you do go in 200%, however, uh, the iPhone does seem to be a tad sharper if you look at towards this sign, it does seem to be a tad sharper on the iPhone. So I do prefer that uh, compared to the Note, but uh, once again, both are doing a good job. Now, if we use the telephoto camera, so this is the two times optical zoom because night mode is available on both of these when you are using the two times optical zoom. And here, I do prefer the iPhone overall, I think because it's got the slightly wider F2.0 aperture, it is letting in that much more light. and uh, It is giving you a brighter image, especially if you look towards the ground area, you can see that it is brighter on the iPhone compared to the Note. Now, what's interesting is that the iPhone doesn't have a night mode for the ultra wide camera, the Note does. So I'm not sure why this is, I'm assuming because it's an F2.4 aperture. So Apple haven't applied the night mode to that. On the Note, however, you do have the night mode for the ultra wide camera. And although it's not a perfect image, it is quite grainy and it's not as sharp. 
Uh, it's nice to have this because look at the difference here. You've got uh, uh, essentially a viewable shot and you've got something which you can't actually see because it's uh, uh, completely uh, black here. So uh, I'm not sure why Apple haven't included this. I hope they can include it in the software update. But currently when it does come to low light from the ultra wide, uh, you know, you've got night mode versus no night mode. So it's a clear win here for the Note. Another shot outdoors in low light with the primary camera. Here, I do prefer the iPhone. It's a brighter image overall. It's also a tad sharper. So I do prefer the iPhone here compared to the Note. And a final image indoors in low light. Uh, and here, both are doing a good job. Uh, the Note is brighter, but it does seem to have a bit of a green tint. The seat that we've got in the image is gray, but uh, it's definitely looking a bit more green on the Note. Uh, so although you are getting a brighter image, it is giving you a bit of a tint on the Note uh, compared to that on the iPhone. Right, now let's look at selfies. So we've got a very similar selfie setup on both cameras. You have the regular, and uh, this is gonna shoot around seven megapixels, but if you do wanna go wide, then it's gonna allow you to get a lot more into your shot. So this is just as soon as you open the camera and you take a selfie. Both seem to be doing a very, very good job here. Uh, great details, uh, we've got uh, great dynamic range as well. There's uh, a bright background, but both have uh, done a good job in maintaining those details. Uh, the Note does seem to have a bit of smoothening going on. I can definitely notice that even though beauty mode has been completely switched off, uh, there is still a bit of smoothing going on, which I'm not a huge fan of. You might like that, but I'm personally not a huge fan of. And then we can use the wide, so you can switch it between this manually if you'd like, and you can get a lot more of the background and yourself into the shot. Uh, it seems like the iPhone is a tad wider here, um, so you are getting a little bit more into your shot of the iPhone compared to that of the Note. But once again, I think both are doing a very, very good job. Now I wanted to test out dynamic range. So here's a, a situation where there is tricky dynamic range. It's a very bright background. And here the iPhone is definitely doing better. Uh, it's uh, maintained details and colors in both the background as well as the foreground. Whereas I am appearing uh, quite a bit darker on the Note uh, compared to the iPhone. So here for dynamic range, I'm definitely liking the iPhone better, but I wanted to do some more tests. So I moved a location slightly and I used the wide angle. And here I do prefer the notes, although the iPhone has definitely focused on me and made me bright, uh, it has blown out some of the background. Whereas the notes, although it's a darker image overall, uh, it has maintained the detail in the background as well as in the foreground. So here I prefer the note. Now portraits from the front facing camera. Now this is interesting because uh, I've quite struggled with the portrait mode from the front facing camera on the note. And it might just be specifically for me because you know I do have a beard and I tend to wear sunglasses a lot. But for me, it has been quite hit and miss because sometimes it'll do portrait mode, sometimes it'll tell me that it's uh, taken a portrait shot, but when I go into the gallery, it's no longer a portrait shot. So that's something that I definitely do have to mention and it's something that I've found quite frustrating with the Note. And it's something that wasn't there on the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. It's something that's never been a problem on the iPhone or the Google Pixels. So uh, I'm not sure why this is, but anyway, when it does work, here is the result. So uh, you can see that both actually have done a really good job. Uh, differences in color, once again, I do prefer the colors on the iPhone better. I'm starting to look a little bit yellow on the Note image. If you look towards the back, um, that strip there is supposed to be white, but it is now yellow on the Note. So I am preferring the colors on the iPhone better here, but the edges seem to be a little bit better on the Note. If you look towards my hair, um, you can see that the iPhone has struggled a little bit, whereas the Note has kind of uh, done a little bit of a better cutout. So this one is an interesting one. I do think that both are doing a pretty good job overall, however. And now one thing is that the iPhone, when you are in portrait mode, then it only lets you use the cropped in version. It doesn't let you use the wider version. On the Note, you can use both when it does work. And here you can see that uh, we have a wider shot uh, still with that portrait effect. Uh, this is something that you can't do on the iPhone. Uh, it doesn't let you go wide when you are in portrait mode. Now here's another shot. Uh, once again, you are noticing the color differences. Uh, I personally do prefer the iPhone colors a little bit better. Um, the note seems to be making me fairer and uh, there is still that smoothening that's going on on the skin. And although the edge detection does seem to be slightly better, uh, there seems to be a bit of a sort of halo effect going on uh, because of the HDR 
on the Note. So again, I think it's gonna come down to your personal preference, which one of these you like better. Now, low light selfies. So here is in super low light, and uh, you know, uh, I'm not sure why you'd wanna take selfies in uh, this sort of darkness. Uh, but here, I do prefer the Note, it's a brighter image, and it's also not as noisy as the iPhone. And if we do use the front-facing flash, once again, I do prefer the notes here. It's a sharper image. It's also a brighter and it's got less noise compared to the iPhone. Right, so that was a lot to take in. Now, I have to say that both of these cameras are very, very good. They're some of the best cameras out there and I wouldn't have a problem shooting with either of these. But of course, you guys are not gonna forgive me unless I give my conclusions and my opinions. So let's break everything down. Initially, when it comes to video, I am gonna have to give the overall win to the iPhone. The video was more stable, even up to 60 frames a second. Uh, on the Note, as soon as you go to 60 frames a second, you lose that stabilization. This is still there on the iPhone. From the front-facing camera, you can also go up to 4K 60, uh, but you do lose extended dynamic range there, but that's something that you can't do on the Note. So when it comes to video, I still have to say that the iPhone is king. And if video is your thing, then I think that the iPhone still holds that crown. The Note, however, is not bad by any means. It still shoots a great, great video. It's just not as good as the iPhone, in my opinion. Now, what about images? Okay, let's break this down into different sections. So we'll look at the different lenses. When it comes to the primary camera, I think both were very, very good. Uh, in good light, they were great. In low light, they were also very, very good and very, very close. There are those differences in color. I would say that overall, the iPhone does give you more natural and true to life colors, whereas the Note gives you the more saturated, more punchy colors. I think that's gonna come down to your personal preference. Some people do prefer those colors. Some people like the natural shots. I like somewhere in between these two. So I'm gonna say that when it comes to the primary cameras, both are very, very good. Also for low light, both are very, very good. I'm so glad that Apple has now upped their low light game. And a lot of the low light shots I did prefer on the iPhone, but overall I'd say when it comes to low light, because of the night mode that both of these have, both are very, very good. Moving on to the ultra wide cameras. Ultra wide cameras, I would say that uh, the Note still has the best ultra wide camera on any smartphone right now. Uh, images were just sharper with better dynamic range compared to the iPhone. The iPhone, um, I did like the consistency between the lenses when it came to color, but the ultra wide was just a tad softer and the dynamic range wasn't as good. So when it comes to ultra wide, the Note is definitely the king here. And also for low light, I'm not sure why Apple haven't included a night mode for the ultra wide camera. So if you do want to get a shot, uh, with the ultra wide camera in low light, then again, the Note uh, does take the edge here. Now, talking about the telephoto cameras, this was quite interesting because in good light, I did prefer the Note. You had sharper images uh, with a better dynamic range overall, I found. So uh, for the telephoto camera in good light, I would go for the Note. But in low light, because of the slightly wider aperture, uh, you do get better low light shots uh, with the telephoto camera on the iPhone. When it comes to portraits, this was quite interesting because you had better edge detection on the Note, but you had much better colors and dynamic range on the iPhone. So which do you prefer from these? Uh, if I was to pick overall for portraits, I would still go to the iPhone. It's still my favorite for portraits just because it gives you a better pleasing shot straight out of the camera. Yes, it might not be perfect on the edges, but for me personally, colors and dynamic range are a little bit more important to edge detection. This will probably come down to your personal preference. Now for selfies, it was quite interesting. I would call it a bit of a draw overall uh, because in a good light, uh, I did prefer the colors and the less smoothening that you have on the iPhone. Also, you do get a slightly wider angle of view on the iPhone and it was more consistent for me when it came to portraits. Uh, with the notes, I did find it a bit of hit and miss. Again, this might just be down to my face, uh, but uh, it is something that I've noticed. I hope uh, Samsung can improve this with a software update. Uh, it wasn't there on the S10 Plus. I had absolutely no problems with the selfie camera on the S10 Plus when it came to portraits. That might be thanks to that secondary depth sensor, which the Note no longer has. But the Note does have the option of a portrait live focus mode, whatever you wanna call it, uh, from uh, the regular angle of view as well as the, the wide angle of view. And it also was better for low light images from the front facing camera. Now, when it came to audio, it was quite interesting because I think both did a really, really good job. You can go back and have a listen. I did prefer the Note overall. I think it had better noise cancellation. And also the zoom in mic, I think it did a slightly better job 
compared to the iPhone. That's what I think anyway. What do you guys think? That was a lot to cover. Definitely let me know in the comments below. Now, if you wanna see lots of images posted from lots of different devices, I do post very regularly on my Instagram. I am at SuperSaf, so be sure to give me a follow on there. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As you can probably tell, it took a very, very long time to put together. So a thumbs up would be appreciated. And if you wanna see more content like this, super sad style, then be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on Super Saf TV. And I'm gonna to try to get some sleep. This was such a mission to put together.